Hello, welcome to Music of the Armenian Liturgy. My name is Armenia Sarkissian, and this week we'll be covering another Christmas hymn, Chorut Metz, one of my personal favorites, as it's really fun to sing in a choral setting, which we did this week. Later in the episode, you'll hear four of the 11 members of St. Gregory a cappella choir, including myself, sing a four-part harmony arrangement of this beautiful shuragan. If you want to skip ahead to the music, the time codes are in the description box below like always, but keep on watching to learn more. Let's jump in. Chorut Mitz is a hymn for sensing, which takes place before the gospel procession. If you want to learn a little bit more about all that, you can check out my episode on Mitzatzutze by clicking the link right above me. Chorut Mitz is also commonly sung during the end of mass tapod, meaning procession, usually on Christmas Eve. Here is a clip of that. Choir and congregation sing Chorut Mitz, the altar servers, deacons, and celebrant will walk in procession around the circumference of the church until they reach the altar again. And I'll skip ahead to that. The text for this hymn is widely accepted to be and most likely written by Mofsetz Chorinazi in the 5th century, but the dates are intensely debated among scholars. His date of birth and death are usually put between 410 and 490 AD, which is the period that Mofsetz himself states he lived in. The Armenians have their own alphabet, which was founded in 406 AD by the famous priest Mesrop Mashtots. Mufsa states in his book that he was tutored by Surp Mesrop and sent by him to study in Edessa, Alexandria, Constantinople, and Athens. When he returned to Armenia, he completed his work in his old age. Mufsa's Chorinazi's great work is the history of the Armenians, Batmuchun Hayots, which has become one of the greatest sources of information on ancient Armenia and its neighbors from the earliest traditions in mythology to the 5th century AD. It was the first book to comprehensively and systematically cover the history of the country. His work pulled together ancient texts in Assyrian, Greek, and Hebrew, plus oral traditions and folk tales, and wove them into a classical history of the Armenians. Mofsis is known as the father of Armenian historiography, Batmahair, but there were other 5th century Armenian historians, such as Yerishe, who documented the history of Vartanans and the Battle of Avaride in 451 AD, and there was Pavstos Puzant, also known as Faustus of Byzantium, who wrote six volumes of Armenian history, which included a description of the reign of Arshak II and much more. In fact, the foundations of knowledge concerning Christian Armenia from 317 to 387 AD is attributed to Faustus. Even before 400 AD, Agathon Keros wrote about Armenian history in the 4th century using the Armenian language but with Greek letters, as Mesrop Mashtots had not yet invented the Armenian alphabet. Here's a translation of the text. Chorut Medzi Vizkan Cheli, the great and magnificent mystery, Vor Haisuma Vur Haitnitsav, is revealed on this day. Hovivkin Yerken Untarishdags, the shepherds sing with the angels, Dan Avedis Ashkari, and bring good tidings to the world. Zenav Nor Arka, a new king was born, I Petrahem Karaki, in the town of Bethlehem. Vortik Martgan Ornitzek, O sons of man, praise him. Zivasun Mer Marmnatsav, for he has for us become flesh. Am Pavelin Yergni Yevyergri, the boundless one of heaven and earth, I Hansarurus Badetsav, was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Voch Megnelov Ihore, without leaving the father, Isurp Airin Pazmetsav, he lay in the holy manger. The arrangement of the Sharagan that we're discussing today was by Yitvar Torigyan, who was a seminarian of Zimmar Monastery. There is a better known arrangement that was done by Gomidas Vartavid, which you can find performances of online, but the one by Yitvar Torigyan is harder to find, and it's also the one that my church here in Toronto sings. So for those two reasons, I thought it'd be the choice for today. The arrangement is in G harmonic minor. 
There are many repetitive rhythmic, melodic, and harmonic ideas throughout the Sharagan, namely the dotted eighth to sixteenth note rhythm pattern that repeats at the beginning of the phrases and just throughout the Sharagan so often that it almost becomes an identifier or a theme of the whole piece. I'll show you what that sounds like. just everywhere. And as is common with repetitive hymns, the note range doesn't really surpass that of a sixth or seventh, probably in order to maintain um, a prayerful trance-like effect without intrusive and disruptive high notes that take away from the intended ebb and flow of the melodic contour. The final cadence is actually one that we've heard at the end of almost every phrase leading up to it, so you don't get this big finale moment, but for this kind of cyclical, processional hymn, it does make sense to have the same ending as, you, as every other phrase. It's also very smart that the only two times there are two straight eighth notes starting a phrase are at the very beginning and in the latter half when there's a bit of a change in temperament. That first phrase would be dramatically different if the first two notes were of the same dotted eighth, sixteenth note pattern that's laid after it. Um, I'll give you an example of, of what I mean. So if it was done that way, it's a bit of a robotic entrance. But instead, Torigen decides to straighten out those two those two eights that begin the phrase, and it's much more welcoming. A much better entrance, I think. The second time we see these straightened out eights beginning a phrase is on the word yirgni, following that same rhythmic pattern that we discussed before. Instead of it gives you a bit of an energetic lift right when I feel like the listener and the vocalist probably are starting to feel like they need one. It doesn't change the phrase, it's not a major alteration, but all of a sudden the phrase feels fresh. And all I did was straighten out those eight, so really smart. Alrighty, let's get into some music. Like I mentioned earlier, this week I was graciously joined by three members of the St. Gregory the Illuminator a cappella choir that I lead here in Toronto. You'll hear the voices of Jivan Stepanian, Capriel Shahinian, Karun Shahinian, and myself on the soprano part. I hope you enjoy our performance of Chorut Metz. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Music of the Armenian Liturgy. I will see you in my next episode.